Hello everyone, Ian here from Able City and Burbank, and today we're checking out the benefits of firmware version 2 with the Sony ILME FR7 and presets. Presets are camera and lens settings that can be stored in memory and recalled instantly. And this is an incredible time saver and allows operators to accurately reset a camera position. This is especially useful when operators are in charge of several cameras at the same time. So presets are nothing new to a PTZ camera, but what is new about firmware version 2 and the FR7 is that it allows us to use the Crocial CDM SFR universal zoom servo drive. The CDM SFR is a compact motor that attaches to the 15 millimeter lightweight rods on the FR7. Uh, this allows us to add zoom capability to lenses that up until now did not have zoom function either using a web browser or a remote control panel. So let's take a look first at how to install the Crocial motor onto the FR7. Before we start the build of the camera, I want to show you a couple of things in the web interface to be aware of. Notice that I have the IP address of the camera right here and we have the live picture from the camera. I'm going to go into the settings window and I'm going to go down to maintenance. I want to go to information and I'm verifying that I have firmware version 2. So we're all set to go there. Next thing I want to do is go over to the technical tab this lens controller tab is brand new in this firmware version. And notice you have a setting and this is now turned on. What this does is it activates the Crocial motor. In other words, it tells the option port on the base of the FR7 to look for communication through the port to the motor. When you install the Crocial motor onto the FR7 and you come in here and turn this on, it will tell you that it needs to reboot the camera and it's going to redo the calibration steps. First thing I want to do is I'm going to use these two tapped holes on the base of the FR7 to install the junction box. So it's just held in by these two self-retaining Allen screws. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to install the gear ring that comes with the motor. And it has a nice crank on here, uh, so it's quick and easy to install it onto my lens here. Just a quick note, every DSLR lens has a different type of finish on its zoom gear or its zoom ring, so uh, this really snugs down nicely. You shouldn't have any slippage. If you do, you might need some camera tape, double stick tape. Also notice that you've got a a pretty long uh, supply of teeth here, which is great to accommodate different diameter of lenses. You, if you're gonna have it dedicated to a lens, you can always trim this off, and now you have it set up perfectly for that lens. I'm gonna put the motor on. A quick note about the motor, it has interchangeable uh, gear diameters, so you can accommodate different widths or diameters of different lenses. Goes onto the 15 mil rods, I'm going to tie it down. Once we have that, now I can do a little bit of cable management. You have these plastic extrusions that are form fitted to fit onto the yoke, and then you have a strap that holds it in place. So I'm going to bring this one over the top, and I'm going to run this elastic band between the camera and the yoke here. And there's a little stud for me to locate it on. I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom here. It goes towards the bottom. Strap comes over, ties off. And you saw that that uh, happened pretty darn quickly. Also notice that now I have this extra cable here between the module or the junction box. Notice that it is an expandable, stretchable cord. This will in no way hinder the calibration process for the FR7. So you got plenty of room here for your pan and your tilt calibrations to take place. It's not going to hinder the operation of the FR7. Now that we have the motor secured to the rods and the gear is on the lens, let's talk about how we're going to connect things on the back of the FR7. So out of my junction, I have two cables. 
I have a power, and I have an Ethernet cable. The Ethernet connection is going to go into the option port. This is the communication between the control panel or your uh, web GUI to the motor. And this is what is supplying the power now to the FR7. We are not going to plug our power supply from the FR7 directly into the base anymore. We're going to take the power supply for the FR7 and we are going to plug it into the bottom of our junction. I've literally uh, climbed up into the rigging in the theater here, hence the weird angle. But I wanted to show you this build. What I have is the FR7 with the crow seal motor, and this is the Sony uh, 100 to 400 zoom. The reason why I wanted to do this build was because I've gotten into this build in theaters where this is the front of house camera. The last show I did, this was rigged to speed rail on the edge or the railing of a mezzanine. So keep in mind, I have the camera about 50 feet above the floor of the theater with a filled house, and I need to get this long focal length on this lens in order to get the performer up on the stage. With that build, we had the focal length locked off. Everything worked great. But now that I have this motor, it's fantastic to be able to offer the director the flexibility of changing focal lengths to maybe get a medium or a wider shot from that front of house camera. We've set up three FR7s here in theater one. The lens that I'm looking at right now is on camera three. That's the camera that is front of house and is rigged up in the ceiling. I have the 100 to 400 on there with firmware version 2 on the FR7 and the Crocial motor attached to the 100 to 400. I'm going to have them zoom out just so you can appreciate the range that I now have with this lens. And I'm going to look at camera 1 now just to give you an idea of the setup that we have for the podcast. And on camera 2, Christy has been so kind to stop by and help us out here. So whether you're doing a podcast or a live show, anything uh, that requires multicam, we now have the flexibility on the FR7 with firmware version 2 and the Crocial motor to utilize lenses like the 100 to 400 that are lightweight, relatively compact, and give us the flexibility that for a lens that was originally designed for a DSLR. And as you can see, we now can zoom using my laptop or using the Sony RMIP500 controller. Let's use my laptop to do some presets. First thing I want to point out before we add presets is a setting in the camera menu that you need to be aware of. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to turn on my camera menu and I'm going to scroll down to the technical menu. And in there, I'm going to go over to zoom and I'm going to select zoom and open that menu up. I want to make sure that optical zoom only is active. I do not want clear image zoom. If you have clear image zoom selected, you will not be able to do presets. So make sure optical zoom only is active. So I have this beautiful close up of Christy and I'm going to hit the plus button here and you see it registers an image of her with the settings as the camera is right now. I'm going to widen out just a little bit. Oops, excuse me. Let me go back here. And let's widen out just a hair. Now I'll do a little tilt adjustment. All right, and let's say the director wants to go back to this repeatedly because we're going to have graphics that are going to come up on either side of her. So it's very important that when the director calls, go to the wide on Christy on camera two, we always go back to this setting. So I'm going to hit the plus button again. And now I have two presets. Note that I am using one of the stock zoom lenses for the FR7. So if I double click on this, I now go into my tight and double click on preset two, and I go out to my wide. Now notice it's not a, uh, you know, it's not like a camera operator move from a close up to a wide. This is merely the camera going from position A to position B. So you're gonna see a little bit of a jolting 
sensation as it's resetting. But the important thing is, no matter uh, what, every time I select that preset one or preset two, it always goes back to the exact same positions. Now I'm gonna select camera three up here and notice it's a high angle shot. I have a FR7 with firmware version two installed and I have a G-series Sony 100 to 400 zoom lens. Now notice, and I also have this uh, up in the lighting rig of our uh, theater here, and I have the Crocial motor attached to the 100 to 400. Now notice what's gonna happen here. I'm gonna double click on preset two, and we're gonna go out to this wide shot. Again, you saw a little bit of the judder as it gets established, but now we're set. This is the advantage of firmware version two. What I just did prior to firmware version two was not possible. I'm using the advantages of that 100 to 400 uh, millimeter zoom that didn't have a zoom capability through the web browser or through a control panel. But now that I have the Crocial motor attached, I do have that control and I can utilize a lens like the 100 to 400 to get this kind of shot. You can also program presets into the RM IP500. In order to do that, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be working in this lower middle section and I'm going to make that section active. Now I'm going to set up a shot. So I'm going to go in on my chroma demand here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to get my zoom position. I'll check my focus here and my camera position. I zoom out just a touch. All right, that looks good. All right, so let's say that is our number one position. To store that, I'm going to press the number one button and you're gonna see one lights up in the lower right-hand section and I'm going to hit store and it gets backlit on the LCD. So that is my indication that we now have a stored position one. Let's go over to position two here. So I'm gonna pan over down and I'm going to zoom out. I want to fill the frame with this focus chart. All right, let's say that's the shot they want. I'm going to double check my focus here. Okay, focus looks good. Now I'm ready to store this, but I want to show you one other option in here. I'm going to change one aspect of the transition to shot two. I don't want that transition to be the same speed as the transition back to position one. To do that, I'm gonna go into the menus of the RM IP500. So I'm gonna select operation, and I'm gonna scroll down to other, and I get to preset speed. The speed top speed is 25 for a PTC camera. For this transition to number two, I'm gonna cut it in half because maybe the director wants to be able to use that slower transition speed as something to cut into while the camera is going to the second position. So now I'm going to press number two and store. And again, in the lower right hand corner of the menu here, you see it being stored. So when I program this, what's gonna happen is it's going to save the zoom, the focus, uh, the camera position, and it's going to remember the speed at which I want that transition to take place. In order to activate these positions, I need to turn on the direct recall. Direct recall allows me to use buttons one through nine. If I had more cameras than that, I would have to use the recall function. So let's see if my settings have been recorded here. So I'm going to go back to number one, and it snaps back to position one. I'm ready to do that. Now let's say the director calls for position two. I press number two, and I've got that nice slower transition going into position two. It has my focus, it has my camera position, and it has my uh, zoom position as well. So now that we've recorded these, we are ready to start shooting.
And that wraps up our look at using presets with the Sony ILME FR7 with firmware version 2 and the Crocial CDM SFR Universal Servo Zoom Drive. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon.